As you can see on this sequence, I am a pilgrim, I am uh, making uh, a walk, and we have a, an aggressive enemy that will employ, in this case, Sensei Rebecca Roca here, her tanto, in order to attack me. When she is trying to reach me, I have here my straight, my straight left arm in order to be away from the attack. She is, uh, she is holding a mortal weapon like the tanto, and from here I have the space to guarantee my safety. And at the same time, I will strike, being away also from the blade and uh, from the tip, in order to break the bones uh, of the hand. Here, having this, with this point, I will grip her, uh, her, her wrist, I will pass the bottom of the staff in order to guarantee this control. Change the hands, make a suit, and from here I will twist in order to make her to, to sit down here. I have this control. Right now I will repeat this last sense in order to show the final technique for, for you to see. One more time, the attack, one, going away, striking, having this control, making this, after this control, sit the hands, make her fall, remaining her sit down, and from here, what I will do is I will move. Sorry, come here a little. From here, what I will do is I will pass to the back and I will make her fall. As you can see, he, she has controlled the arm here and at the same time here. If I want, I could pass here to control and at the same time a step on the, the staff in order to gain the control. After that, slide and go away and have the control. Remain, remind that I have uh, broken uh, hair bones on the hand and I also have press and with the step on the bow it will break the humerus and it will be uh, a, a way to be uh, uncapable to react but not killing the enemy. This is one of the key of these Gungaku methods. Hello, let's uh, see another interesting Gungaku uh, for our tradition, from the season tradition, that it will be very interesting to you and to understand. Uh, this Gungaku was performed by the pilgrims, the itinerant monks, that were walkers through Japan, through the valleys and mountains, and were aided by a staff as a walking aid. And in this case, uh, will be attacked by a, an assailant or assaulter that will employ any kind of weapon, mainly a knife, a mortal weapon, and they needed to defend <coughs> and uh, injure the enemy, but without killing him. As a way to warranty by the by the histories, the stories that will be around uh, that won't be attacked anymore. Any, uh, anyway, all these, uh, all these stories were part of the legends of the myths of Japan and we cannot uh, attest them. But uh, many, uh, many masters in the past were, uh, have tried to recreate and perform the sequence and the, uh, and the legacy of this sequence and mainly of this Gungaku. Mainly we could uh, notice about who was Yoshio Matsudani. Yoshio Matsudani in visit to Brazil uh, seen, uh, saw some sequences performed by Sadao Ebihara. Uh, and he, as he was, uh, this Matsudani Sama, where uh, sensei, a master in Kendo, try to uh, understand and apply properly the striking methods that were uh, known in this method. Then he suggested to apply all these strikes uh, to a bogu, when he was carrying a bogu, a kendo armor, uh, taking in mind that in no moment of the history of Kazen Oryu, this kind of, uh, of equipment has been uh, used. 
Then this Yoshio Matsudani were uh, delighted by, by these techniques and then he tried with the instruction of Shalao Ebihara how to apply the methods, how to strike with a powerful strike to one side to the other, applying on the on the door, applying on the on the trunk, and how these strikes will be uh, will be some way of uh, being unable to the enemy to react, and how this with with uh, this how could get uh, the enemy daisy, etc. Then uh, going to this method, it's called mukoki dome. This mukoki means uh, aggressiveness, means uh, violently, and uh, were performed by these pilgrims, these itinerant servants that uh, me, uh, that were named and the asshole, these monks. Uh, the normal method to apply this is when they were uh, walking by the staff. If I walk directly to the uh, straight to the camera, I, they believe that with this stuff were protected in front. Then they need to keep uh, the attention on the peripheral uh, vision because they need to know if in the if in the side or in the back is happening something. Because if I see that the uh, soldier is on my left, I will switch my position in order to control. As you will see in many sequences, you will several sequences. You will see that uh, the normal position for this is like the walking position, having the stop in front of you, and your arm will be completely straight as a way to protection. But they also use uh, some kamae, some gods, as a way to protect. For example, employing this, using the foot as a as a support and pointing forward in order to gain and guarantee some distance making in this case to sensei rebecca unable to arrive to me because this guarantee my safety during a uh, middle distance also for long distance they used to employ to put this position in order to guarantee because if she tries to, uh, to attack me with a uh, mortal weapon like a knife, I am guaranteed here because she's unable to come here closer than this position. And of course, from here, I could pass and strike, strike in several points in order to break bones, as uh, I have explained before that uh, Matsudani Sensei of Kendo explained with, uh, with the bow, with the protection on the body. Then, uh, for example, to illustrate this method, I will explain uh, one other sequence, like this way, for example, uh, Sensei on Aishimas. She will try to attack me on, for example, on Gyakute, Makuchi. I am walking, and when I get closer, she tries, and from here, I stop here, and this, is, it, this won't be right, because from here, if C falls, I don't have control to attack. Then, in this case, what I will do is I will shift a little my position and I will get here to gain this position. And when she is dropping, uh, sorry, she is uh, going down with the hand, I will strike in order to break wrist bones and also hand bones here. With this powerful strike, I will uh, grab uh, the fingers and from here I have this powerful lock. My staff will go forward and from here I could make a movement in order make her fall to the ground by a twisting method like that way that we have here this control as you can see. After that we have to change the bow in direction. If we have this control here, what I will do is this, this foot will pass over and I will make that this go to this point. If you will see, what we have is a control on the arm, on the biceps, and the other control in the ankle, near the heel. Because with this, middle pressure will be very violent. But this is not the end. I will change a little the position in order to watch the final 
control, please move to that side, perfect. As we have here, I will release only the, I won't step on because this is very painful. When we have this on this position, and I have this step on, what I will do is I will open this because when we are restraining this, uh, this leg open, uh, concerning about the pressure that she is receiving in the ankle, this avoids her to open this side. Then when I open after the step and this is restrained, the other will be very, very painful because uh, we are opening, we are uh, locking on the hip. And here it's very, very violent, as you can see. After breaking the hip here, keep the stuff, move back and guarantee your safety and your perimeter watching around if this, if anything happens around. This guarantee the condition that the legends and the history of a walker, a pilgrim uh, walking around uh, the valleys, the mountains, uh, will be invincible and this guarantee the safety on, uh, on his own walks. Then this is an explanation about this wonderful Gungaku that I hope that you enjoy the same that I am, uh, that I am enjoying. Thank you very much and see you on next time.